My name is Cody Borman. I'm a production supervisor here at Dynajet Research, right here in Belgrade, Montana. We gotta do this more. Gonna... Yeah, good. I was just kind of. No, you're good, man. I want to do this a lot more. This is this is good. Dynajet dinos are manufactured and assembled right here in Belgrade, Montana, by hardworking people, each with their own skill set. As the shop supervisor, I'm really in more of a supporting role for each of them, as everyone on our team is a critical to our success. Uh, I do what I can to keep obstacles out of their way while turning high quality materials into high quality dinos as smoothly as possible. So, yeah, this is our 224 drum in raw form. We get these from overseas. They are a special drum, they're center board. Not a lot of machines around the states even that can do a center board on something that big. So it's a very specific part, um, high quality material. They're all quality control checked before they come to us and then we check them as they come off the truck. Um, so yeah, we just want, want the quality drums to start building our dinos with. We never settle for the standard. It's my goal and our passion to push improvement and quality across the board at all times. I'm proud to be a part of Dynajet and so is my crew. When it comes to my crew, we're talking about 80 years of combined experience. A couple of these guys I even went to high school with. Just as an example, the welder for your 224 dyno has been with the company for over 18 years. The guy that welds up all your 250 frames and links weldments and et cetera, He's been here over 22 years. He can proudly say he welded the first bike frame without a jig, probably not even serialized at that point. Manufacturing the dyno starts with raw materials in-house. Each component goes through our rigorous manufacturing process and is either painted in-house or powder coated by a local company here in Montana. So essentially, this guy goes inside that drum. We get it up in the lathe here. This is a 1941 free rock. This thing built parts for World War II probably. Um, yeah, we need the beef. We need the big beefy machines to make big beefy drums. Finished product here. Each inside diameter is turned specifically for its own end disc. So you can't mix and match these end discs at all. The tolerances are anywhere from two and a half to four thousandths. Uh, we try to tight, keep those as tight as possible. Best fit possible. We've got a nice knurling texture here for traction. That's the only reason is for traction. Because when you're making horsepower, you know you need traction. Boom. And the infamous Tower of Fire. So like I mentioned before, that tolerance is super tight. We heat the end of that drum up so it'll expand enough to let us drop those end discs down in there. Once we get it set down in there, we let it cool a little bit, and then we get a, a nice bead welded around there. Once both ends of that fixture, are, of that drum are done, it's set aside to cool and then it goes through its own balancing process just like a wheel on a car. It's got a disc hanging up there ready to go. As soon as that thing cools, we pull the halo, drop the disc in there and let it start saturating some of that heat. As that heat spreads out, he'll start welding it, get, get a nice weld in there. When assembling each dyno, the guys inspect and test each component they install and then proceed to build in the quality that our customers have all learned to know about. Tristan, once again, guy that does our 224 drums, he also builds all these cabinets. These do come pre-bent by a local company here in town. We, uh, we put them in a fixture, we get them all squared up, we weld them, we clean them, make sure all the dimensions are to spec, everything is checked. Off it goes to prep, and then to paint. That new satin black paint everybody likes. Do you want to talk about the gloss of black? No, no. It'll just bring up so many bad memories. So I got some pit plates being made here. Got a jig up there. Jay's making these things all look pretty. They'll head off the powder coat. This little area right here is pretty sweet. 
This is actually Jaron. He's the one that builds all the motorcycle drums. He's been doing this probably 18 years. Um, he will fit, weld, turn, knurl, and balance all these drums in a big simultaneous process. Starts there with drums and end discs. Through that machine, that fixture, the balancer, and onto this rack here, looking like jewelry. Off to the paint booth they go. One of the best things about the Dynajet Dyno is that they're fully customizable. Customers also have the option to add upgrades down the road should they choose to. Check this out. Some KA, this is your IX drum. If you want to run a side-by-side -side or a four-wheeler on one of our bike drums, this is the drum you need. This is an extended drum that goes off to the side. These just come out of the paint booth. Looking beautiful. As mentioned before, both ends of these guys are burned. This is a balanced drum, ready to go. Counterweights are added on the inside of this lip here. These are balanced within a quarter ounce. These, once they're cab, once we get them in the cabinet, we get them loaded up, painted, everything goes together. We put them in this run-up station. We'll actually run them about 160 miles an hour for five minutes, and then we run them up to 180 miles an hour for 10 minutes. We do a heat test and a stress test on the bearings at that point. If it passes, off it goes to get a mass, a serial number, and then lucky customer gets, gets what he ordered. This guy's name is Pat. Pat's been doing these dynos about six years. He pretty much builds all your 224 dynos. He'll build your Lynx assemblies. Might get a little bit of help here and there, but he's strictly auto dyno. This guy is, this is the guy that creates all your dynos for ease of install in mind. This is our bike dyno area. All the bike dynos get built over here along with some of our accessories. This guy's name is Chet. I'm Chet. I build all of the motorcycle dynos here at DinoJet, and this is my newest one that I'm building right here. Honestly, I can get one of these together in about a day. It doesn't take too long, but to do it right definitely takes a little bit of extra time. I came in here wanting to standardize production and actually making things a little bit nicer, and I think I bring, I have a lot of aircraft maintenance experience. Yeah. And so I brought that into building these, uh, especially when it comes to the wiring. It's nice and clean, it doesn't go anywhere, and I have yet to have anybody call and say they're having an issue with the motorcycle dyno. Right here's your finished motorcycle drums. Fresh coat of paint, all finished up. This is what we call a module. You got your starter, pickup card, speed wheel, drum shaft. Right there is the base of every bike dyno. You're Tyler, right? Yeah, I'm Paul. Hey Paul. Yeah, hi. Yeah, nice to meet you. So Cody said after you film or you finish uh, pressure washing these, they go uh, into the paint factory. Yeah. yeah, I'll go in there and I'll, um, I'll warm them up in the booth when I'll, while I prep them. Okay. And then uh, I'll start getting my paint and everything ready. And then I spray them. Make sure all these parts have nice paint finish on them. No runs, no defects. Anything we see we don't like, we just redo it. It's gotta be the best. Getting that material here into production, finished, shipped on time is a huge undertaking. If we don't have the high quality people working as a team for each and every product, none of this would be possible. Keeping that quality standard is probably one of our biggest challenges because again, we don't settle. We want every ride to be the best. Dynajet is a worldwide company. We do have distribution in other companies besides the United States. A facility here in Montana supplies all the distributors with products, be it a massive dyno or a belt for your side-by-side. -side. Everything comes from right here. I'm out, but I figured that was a good place to stop.